Um, no. Is the sound good like this? Yeah. I cannot hear myself, so it's a problem. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining, of course. Um, well, it will be pretty hard because I see many agile professionals in this agenda. Um, I'm not, so let's be clear at the beginning. Uh, my name is Sebastian. I'm the French quota of this uh, well and organized event. Uh, I'm here to speak about something I like very much, which is the change management. Um, I would define myself more than kind of a change agent rather than an agile guru. I learned about agile one year ago only, one year and a half maybe. So I'm still learning, and this is the exciting part. Um, today, so the name is, we try to do something pretty cool to be attractive, uh, win of change from I to we. Could be a song, but this is our story first. Um, we are representative from uh, a local bank, international bank implemented in Ukraine for uh, more than 15 years now, a Kersi bank. But this is not the topic of the discussion today. This is more uh, to share with you an experience, a piece of experience on how uh, we can uh, move big banks into something faster, uh, something more consistent in terms of organization, but also much more reactive to the change in, of uh, environment. So we will speak a little bit about the environment, which is not really exciting, believe me. Um, and we'll speak a lot about how we started to uh, work on this transformation. So I'm Sebastian. I'm a, let's say, a leader in transformation. Nastia with me, Nastia Antonietz. She's my Hello. agile transformation leader. Uh, you will see she's the more technical from us. Uh, she knows much more than me about agile. So, from I to we, uh, the topic is easy. Uh, we are a big bank, we have big organization, big silos, big uh, org structure, big boss, big, uh, big everything. The question of this uh, is how can we make this beautiful mechanic work actively, work together, work faster. Um, I want to share with you a bit of background of the history because it counts a lot in the DNA of my company. Um, a few years ago, uh, we suffered a lot from the Ukrainian market. Well, you know Ukraine better than me. Um, the fluctuation of the financial market is not easy to follow, easy to cope with. Uh, we had a big war on cost-income ratio. I'm not joking. We did not want to earn more money. We wanted to um, lose less. Okay. Uh, so on this, of course, it means what? Uh, massive uh, staff reduction, low investment. We will see that this point is key. When you stop investing, of course, you start being behind. Do it yourself, firefighter. I guess you all know the concept in your daily work. Okay, I don't want to hear about this, just get it fixed. The last point is the flight of talent. Uh, in simple words, when you are not sexy, when you are not funny, uh, you lose the best ones first. Okay, if you want to be the best bank or the best organization, you need the best. So, uh, sorry, yeah. Um, we are still a bank, as I said, so NBU, you know what it is, central bank, okay, post-Soviet country central bank, I would say. Uh, data, okay, we are a company, we are now, we are a banking company, we have a lot of data to be protected. Compliance, cybersecurity, security. Why I mention this, it's not, of course, to, um, to get your support and a bit of cry, but it's more that whatever we want to do, we have to be safe first. Safe first, it means that we cannot be super funky. Uh, we can consider that banks are a bit bureaucratic, but the bureaucracy comes from here as well. Apart from us, apart from them. So this is the overall environment, uh, super exciting. Um, but at least, I mean, if you like change, change management, you like challenges. So this is a very good environment to work in these days, believe me. Well, and of course you have this uh, let's say, super cool habits of blaming bankers first, and then we will see what happens. Well, I'm not a banker by nature, so I can speak about bankers, no problem. Um, how can we? The how can we comes from the top management, because our board members, of course, want to have the best bank. Okay, that's the normal challenge. And we have to cope with what we did not do in the past and what is happening fast in the market today. You have to consider I don't know which of you is working today for a developing company. I mean, are you at sources of bank or big industries? 
Today, the banks need to really run super fast. And on this, um, customers are more and more demanding. Everybody is cool except bankers. So when you have e-banking, it has to be super attractive. Some do well, some are coping now. The second part is get the best from our internal competencies. 5,500 people, it's 5,500 opportunities to get something new, to get something good. Uh, catch up the digital banking trend. Yeah, very demanding, as I said. And react smoother to, const to constant uh, changes. I described previously the banking environment in Ukraine. The international one is not more exciting, believe me. It's changing all the time, tighter and tighter. So we have to cope. Historically, when you go in a pure waterfall mentality, you wait to have the final procedure to start working. We cannot, because you receive the final procedure on Monday. It should be implemented the next Monday. So we have to change the mindset. This is the overall target given to us by the management. It sounds very standard. I'm sure that most of you already saw stuff like this. Well, this is mine today. Well, to, to reach this, what I want to share with you is that we did not only work on, okay, let's go Agile, Agile is cool, Agile is the solution. No. Agile came last. And I want to share with you briefly what was the way to start changing the structure, the organization, and then I will explain the rationale why we decided to have Agile on top of it. Big structure, big organization. We have all been raised during the business school, the university, that you have to be a manager, okay? Because the manager is the one who decides, the one who knows, the one who gets the money. In such a structure, you want to take the elevator, okay? The social elevator, you want to be at the top. This is the most important. Historically, we had plenty of manager position because people were expecting to be manager. The first decision we took, it's of course linked with uh, cost uh, savings as well, was to have a flat organization, okay? When we started the exercise a few years ago, we were around 20% managerial ratio, okay? One boss, five, four workers, to be honest. Today, we have changed. We are at 13, okay, which is, believe me, a huge revolution. We don't have so many layers, okay? Globally, we have three most of the, the time. Why is it important here? Is that because when a, a good idea comes from the bottom, it should go faster to the top. This is not agile, really, but it was one of the precepts, and uh, it helped us a lot to have faster changes. On this, just a few comments. It does not work if you don't delegate more. So this was the initiation of the change management, delegation. Okay? Why delegation? It's not only trust. It's that when you delegate, you are closer to the customer. When customer asks for something, you want to have an answer. If you don't empower the people in our branch, bank branches, for example, you don't satisfy the customer at the point. So this is how to catch the opportunity and constant feedback collection. Yeah, because uh, so-called experts, them I don't like very much, but know um, pretty much about, uh, let's say, the experience with the customers, which we don't know at the head office. If we don't go and pick the ideas, we will never know. This is the first point. The second point, everybody speak about it. We did it. Uh, it takes time. This is the end-to-end -end process management. Everybody speak about process every day, but usually when you speak about the process, you speak about this teeny piece you can see. We decided to have a global vision about all our processes, let's say the main critical, because it brings visibility. It's simple as is. It takes time, but we had the visibility. The one who knows is the one who can decide. This is very simple. Once you know your processes, everything is possible. The second part, once you know your processes, was to simplify the processes. Of course, it's still on the way. It will take ages. We have um, hundreds of processes. But the lean culture, and I'm sure you, you heard about this or you practiced it, lean, agile are one. Okay? Don't believe anybody telling something different. Visual management. You have daily stand-up, you look at the board, you have a constant improvement of your processes. This is agile. I mean, this is one of the parts, one of the components of agile. Big companies like us write procedures about this, you know, how to do agile and lean together. Well, we have initiated, what I like very much with lean, this is this continuous improvement. Every day, you can fine-tune your process, fine-tune the organization, fine-tune the relationship between people. So, 
This is the little drop of oil that you put in the system every day. Well, this is simplification, collaboration. This point um, looks very consultant style, by the way. Um, empower people. Okay, this is very trendy. Everybody likes the term. You can go to uh, internet and find a lot of presentation. Let's get empowered. This is the most difficult uh, because this is where you change the culture. This is where you have to go to your CEO and tell him, yeah, trust me, I will do it. Okay, but what is the report? What is the, let's say, what are the KPIs? What are, how will I control? <coughs> CEOs in bank and managers in banks have been always told that we have to control. We are a bank. We should know. Today, the empowerment means, guys, okay, try, just try. This is where mentalities are changing. We have initiated in the meantime, one year, one year and a half ago. Okay, customer centricity, you can do. Okay, put more people from sales in the middle. Transparency, oh, this is the problem. Why should I explain what I'm doing? I'm responsible. Stronger together, okay, good marketing word, but this is true, this is what I believe. I mean, you cannot win a match if you are alone. I mean, it does not work. So we have to pile up and to aggregate all the capacities. Do not limit yourself. This is my message, very personal message. This is something we are doing well now already, okay? You are young, you are brilliant, just keep running. I mean, there is no age, no CV, no... You know, in banks like us, every time someone is... Promoted, we see he did this super school and 20 years in experience and la 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 la. Today we don't care. We don't care. We need dynamic. We need people who try, run, and deliver. Well, as we used to tell, we had a good posters in uh, in the office saying no try, no fly. Okay, all my respect for the guys who were crushing themselves uh, trying flying a few years ago, a few decades ago, but I really believe in it. We have to try. So. Coming to Agile, today agility for me is the key word. Agile is a set of methodologies, different um, concepts, different approach. Well, at the end, you have to build yours. So this, we can mix everything. It helps, we will get back to it after. For me, the Agile values are more important uh, because this is a real culture shaker. It means that when you start training people on this, you know, things start to happen, and this is what we will see um, in the coming slides. Here I step in. So as for any transformation, uh, the first thing you need to understand before you introduce any changes is how you will introduce them. Uh, let's imagine that our organization, our company, is an organism. It has a lot of cells in it. It's, um, it's a living organism. And with the change, you want to change the DNA of this organism. You want to to make it mutate. You want to do a mutation in it. Usually, uh, when if we compare, this is a bad comparison, but mutation is kind of a disease. Um, when, when you compare it like that, you have to understand that disease, it's not going like this. So if this is an organism, it's just coming from one side, and then it stops. The disease is spreading everywhere. And the thing you have to make sure in any transformation you do, whether it's agile, lean transformation, visual management, doesn't matter. This is that your transformation, it's on every, each and every layer of your organism. So the message here is that we really spend time to understand how we will do the, uh, the transformation. And this is the framework, this is not something which we have created, but this is something which we have implemented. We did it together with uh, our partners. Um, how did it work? So how, how, will we, how did we structure it? Uh, by the way, does it remind you something, this framework? Any pictures you've seen before? Yeah, it looks like Scrum, definitely. Um, so the idea is that you have the sponsors. And as you may see that uh, our transformation, it, it was not actually initiated by IT, as in many companies. Uh, the sponsors of our transformation is CIO plus COO the operations manager. So it tackles a lot of layers of organizations already. Uh, and uh, the sponsors, they're given the vision. They're given the direction in which the transformation should go. Uh, the sponsors communicate directly with the transformation leader. So it's, this is basically a product owner for the transformation. This is someone who has a transformation backlog, 
which, by the way, consists not only of the backlog of the teams who are going through the transformation. It definitely consists not of the backlog of the teams. It consists of backlog of the things that you need to introduce in your company in order to make it agile, which includes the education, and Sebastian will explain this after, which includes the procedures, because this is how it works. In the bank, you need people need to, uh, people are communicating to each other by procedures, but you improve it by the education too. Uh, and this is a lot about change management. And we're working in the iterations, and uh, please note that these iterations are not the same cadence as the iteration of the agile teams that we are having. This iteration is uh, much um, more because it's uh, two months. Uh, we have like two months sprints because we consider that two months is the time uh, during which we can change, introduce the change in the company. Uh, and we have the transformation team with the Agile coach. And here the notion of transformation team is one of the most important. This is the thing that guarantees that the transformation is ongoing on each and every layer of the company. This transformation team is not uh, the team of people who are hired to do the transformation. This is people who are already working in the company. Uh, the thing, how you will, uh, how you will choose the people who will do the transformation is also very important. So can you tell us how did you choose the guys? So in, f in fact, the, um, the idea, again, we speak about transformation. Transformation is not something you start one month and you end the next month. Transformation is something continuous. You have to go deep. And to go deep, of course, it takes time. So. To choose this transformation team, uh, first we needed cross-functional. We did not want to focus only on retail or only in IT, only in HR for change management. So we took a mix of um, many teams, have the authority to enact uh, the changes. So it means you cannot go too low in the hierarchy. You need someone who has the capacity to implement and have proper feedbacks. Uh, have a strong personality to challenge you. So it means that, as I said, we were learning about Agile, so we did not have the ambition to be the best. And sometimes you can take some stupid decision or have stupid ideas. Uh, and these guys were, are strong enough today to tell us, okay, guys, tut, 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 let's stop on this. They do it with Genia as well, who is our coach today, the guy behind the camera. And sometimes Genia has to be challenged as well. So this is our role, collective role, and the personal interest is key. We chose people who really wanted to learn Agile, to move Agile, to have Agile implemented in their product or in their organization. Yes, but I would like to come back to this picture and uh, to come back to the beauty of this framework. Um, usually in the change management, the first thing that uh, is uh, uh, suggested to do is to find a sense of urgency for the organization. This is usually the hardest. And uh, with this, this helps you to simplify this uh, task. Because the transformation team itself, each of the guys there, they have their own sense of urgency. And this is how you create the global sense of urgency. When you speak to them, you understand the real pain points, and you see quickly how you can resolve something fast, or maybe you have to put it in the global resolution of, uh, of the transformation. Uh, and the beauty is really that the changes are not done by you, by yourself. They are done by them directly on, on in their teams because they have the authority for that. So now we have the team, but we still need to go on with the scope. This is the scope of the transformation which, uh, which we are doing in, in agility. Uh, we have three pillars. Uh, we really... We, it really took time for us to, to structure them, and we did it both together with the sponsors and with transformation team. We have three directions. Uh, the first one are products. This is something w which we consider really strategical and where we consider that we need to invest in resources of cross-functional teams. Uh, this is something on which the company will concentrate during the next uh, several years for sure. Uh, and this is where we need to make sure that business IT relationship or whoever inside, because business IT is only the first part, but then you have also a lot of, lot of procedures in the company, uh, that they guarantee fast delivery and often, yes. Uh, and this is how we try to resolve the problem of constant collision of resources which you have with the project. So products, strategic, cross-functional teams. And product is definitely the key priority. We invest everything in this direction. As I said before, we speak about transformation. 
So to deliver one project in Agile is very cool because probably you will succeed and this is a good achievement. But at the end, the structure and the organization, the mentality of the, the bank, of the company, will not change. The product, this is daily resource, this is a daily uh, dedicated team which is running every day in Agile. And whatever they do every day, it really impacts the organization around because everybody starts to adapt to this product team. So basically, you will need <coughs> then to create the ecosystem around the product team. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, projects, they make sense because you still have in your company something which has the beginning and the end. Uh, the end can has also really two, uh, two options. This is really the end or this project can become a product. This is also a possible, possible way. Uh, for projects, we, we try to give a room for having agile but still having a waterfall approach. Uh, because this is this is really s uh, in the mindset of organization, and you have to do agile projects with one who really want to to go and to try and to experiment. Uh, and with this, we try to resolve the problem of uh, uh, projects. They stay in the portfolio for years, but what we can the, the the problem we resolve here is that being there for years, they still have some delivery in between. So this is for the projects. Uh, and the last, this is, uh, I would say, uh, our favorite one. Um, we don't uh, think that the projects and the products who are usually around IT are the only way where you can use uh, Agile. We also consider that Agile can be used just in organization without IT. Yes, you remember this picture of the end-to-end -end process, which was, of course, not a uh, real or visible one, but the idea is to say that when you have a process today, um, a daily process is like a daily development. It means that you have the phase one and the phase two. I mean, you know this Gantt chart. Today, in the process, it works the same. Usually, I push something, you receive, you push it, and the next one receive. What we try to do, we are experimenting. Okay, We have collocated few teams which are working on the same process. The idea is to see if we can shorten the time, improve the communication, and sometimes also the cost of this project by having everybody in the same team, you have a Kanban, you have the daily stand-up, and guys start to collaborate more. Well, the first conclusion is very simple, you have much less fight, okay? Because it's easy to fight by email, but much more difficult when you face uh, the, the opponent. Yeah, this is true. Uh, should we quote the example of the organization? Well, today we have a um, first pilot, which is, uh, I mean, running, this is, we refurbish branches, okay? We have branches, bank branches. And usually you have the business who is telling, okay, I want this, it will be fantastic. And the real estate saying, oh, pop, oh, 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 impossible. Well, today these two teams were not collocated. They were competing even on who is responsible and guilty. Today we have asked them to sit all together. I think it was three months ago, something like this. Of course, it takes time to, um, to improve. We need a lot of uh, facilitation, but it, it starts working. So this is one pilot, okay, not more so far. If it works, of course, it will be the flagship that will say, oh, it works, guys. But this is important. We are a big company with many processes. If we can improve the processes, it's also a benefit. True. So still, it's all about people and change management. Um, I want to share with you, uh, I would say, the personal approach, the personal vision. I mean, my, my, uh, my vision of this change. Usually, um, when you have a, a change in your company, you have to tell, you say, OK, guys, we will change. Very good. You have a plan. This is the magic way how we will reach it. And then you assess. Okay, targets, KPI, reporting, dashboards. I mean, everybody knows this. Well, this is the very simplistic uh, vision we have today. For me, uh, sorry, the slides are a bit uh, messed up, but it's okay. Uh, for me, the change management is between the lines. Okay, because what I just presented before is a very classic way of doing. What we do is that we definitely go the extra mile. We explain people, we take time. I mean, the adhesion of people I is very key. If they don't believe in what you are doing, this is a top-down approach. This is not the way the world is going today. Again, I will not speak about the new generations because I'm part of the old one, but uh, today people need to understand why. Just explain the why and then everything gets simple. You have to inspire for this. You have the sponsors. You have to pick your sponsor very carefully. You need someone who knows how to speak to the people, who is present, who is on the field, who is the driver. I will add something which is very, very important to me, which is the training. Okay, Training is not a technical training. This is not how to do the things. But training starts, I will brief you a bit more after, but this is also the awareness. OK, 
Okay, when you don't know about something, it's a bit scary. You know, nobody knows the um, uncertainty. Why should I go there? I mean, it's a bit dark here. Yeah? So when you have this awareness session, people understand at least what are the main concepts, the main consideration. Okay, and then it's it's a bit easier. This is a good point. Last but not least, you have to listen and feel. It means that uh, KPIs don't speak about everything. KPIs bring the result. You can have a fantastic result, but not a fantastic collaboration. And people may not adhere to your uh, changes. So for me, this listen and feel, feel sounds a bit strange. Okay, It's not something material, but you know that some people feel. I mean, we call them the emotional people. And this feeling for me, this is really the added value in some change agents in the, in the change management, the feeling, the emotions are not, um, I would say, weak points, are definitely an added value. So if you are emotional and your boss one day told you, okay, you are too much emotional, then just call me and I'm sure we can do something. The last point, celebrate, okay? Uh, many of you might be developers, might be uh, working for some cool uh, modern IT teams. Yes, we have to celebrate. It's not that expensive, but this is always something we remember. And this is how you create the team spirit. Well, tell what, I will go briefly, but uh, the silo organization, of course, these are the big companies, but I know it's also the case for the small one. It was very experti expertise based. Okay, this is my responsibility, then I done and uh, I forward it to you. Today we have this end-to-end -end process management. Why is it important in the agility today? because we create the core responsibility. It means that we have a customer-centric approach, customer request, customer delivery, and we are all responsible. The KPIs are collective. The problems are collectively uh, resolved today. It works, we really do it. This one is today more mature. Okay, piece by piece, we are going now. We are covering more and more in the bank, but this proof um, is um, the added value. Explain why. It sounds very basic, but this is it took us three months to have these four whys. Okay, you can make jokes about us, but my, um, let's say, challenge to you today is try to explain, even to a child, why. The why is the hardest question. We solved it. It was agreed with the sponsors, with the teams, the transformation team. And now, every time people say, okay, why should I go? We have this common answer to the whys. And this is important. Again, I repeat, but we all I mean, like to know why. Okay, we are not robots, we are not slaves, so it's also important to be considered. And I will just add about why. It also helps you to gain the credibility in front of people whom you are selling this. Because everyone in our post-Soviet, everyone is engineers and everyone is like, why? But when you have an answer, people are just, okay, okay, we trust you. Show the way. Um, this is, okay, I, I'm not an artist, I'm not a designer, but um, the idea, what I like very much with the implementation of Agile in the organization, Agile methodologies, Agile spirit, that you don't have to go at scale. I mean, I don't like this term of at scale. It's very trendy. I used to oppose a lot to the guys from Paris in the head office saying, okay, when will you go at scale? I mean, do I need to go at scale? I mean, I don't know. Today, I don't know. So. What we agreed with the top management, it was also our way to cool down everybody, saying, okay, relax, guys, we'll not make a revolution, we will go smoothly. The idea was to learn first, then to target one product on which we have real added value and it can bring something, and then a second one, a third one, same goes for the project and the organization. Is there a target model today? Of course not. Uh, what I can say is that products are definitely the targets. Uh, they are very important to me because they are in-depth and this is how we will have stability. But I don't know when we will reach this uh, beautiful tower here. But today, uh, we start to scale. Uh, I have to admit that my first uh, contact with Agile methodology was with uh, less methodology. By default, this is the one I like very much because this is, uh, for me, a real scaling of our organization and you can have these bricks piling up. And this is a real agile transformation. This is personal here. Um, train, as I said, uh, training, it, it, it's not only sending guys to your scrum coach or to the scrum uh, school or whatever. This is for me, this awareness. We invested a lot the first weeks, the first months of our transformation um, with the coach, 
to have awareness session. One day, 10, 15 people coming here, okay, let's make some games, let's speak about Agile, let's discover together. But the most important was to have one message. Um, I don't know how your companies are organized today, but my first problem was to guarantee that everybody understand the same thing. Okay, it sounds a bit basic, but when you go to this Agile company and this Agile coach and this Agile training, messages are a bit different, okay? The, the, the sensitivity is a bit different. So we decided to go all for one type of training in order to have the same uh, vision. Then specialized training, Scrum Master, Product Owner, something more technical, cross-functional team trainings and uh, coaching. So we take the guys, IT, retail, and uh, let's say risk, up all in one room, and this is the way we work together. Facilitation, this is our daily job. The impact today is that first it takes time, okay? So we, we cannot expect to have things going like this, you know this. It takes budget, so yes boss, sorry, but I need a bit more cash because we are a bit short this month. And new roles, facilitator. Facilitator in a bank does not exist. I mean, we have controllers for sure, we have salespeople for sure, but we don't have facilitator. Back to the topic of emotions. When you are a facilitator, you have techniques like in every job, but you have this sensitivity who helps you to to um, be, uh, how to say, to put yourself at the level of every type of personalities. I love this role, I love these people. Uh, Nastia is a fantastic one today. We have some others. This takes time as well. This is a new role, new personalities. Well, the listen and feel, uh, this is what I was telling before. Uh, I presented this slide already a few months ago, but for me this is very important. Half of my day is spent in psychoanalysis. I spent my time receiving people in my office saying, yeah, but you know, since we tried this, it's really hard for me, it changed my life completely. Yeah, I know, I understand, but... So this is where my whys are very important because then I get back people, you say, you know, we do it for the good sake of the company, at the end it will be fine, let me come with you, I will help, I will translate. This is really the extra mile. This is the change management. You have to put yourself at the level of the people. It takes time, then let's slow down the process, slow down the implementation. But I want everybody to adhere. If not, I will have to get back to it in the future. So I save my future time by investing today. Well, celebrate, no need to explain too much, I guess. Uh, you all had, I hope, I wish uh, for you, some good celebration with your teams. Um, for me, uh, every celebration is important because it really proves the people that every step is important. In a transformation, you saw my, let's say, my steps towards the big building. This is the reality of every day. When someone agrees, when your boss agrees on a budget, agrees on a change of structure, agrees on a change of procedure, I have to admit that sometimes I would like to celebrate even these small steps. Because once it's done, I will never have to do it again. And this is important. The teams, the product team, have to enjoy this. We have to dedicate budget for celebration. Uh, my second favorite slide is this one. Uh, nothing against the Lada. Um, what I hate the most in this agile world is the illusion. I met hundreds of times people saying, yeah, we are agile. Wow. I'm always impressed, so I say, oh guys, can, can we share exper experience? Let's have a talk about this. And the first question is, when did you start your Agile transformation? And the answer is, yeah, six months ago already. Oh, cool, you are Agile in six months, I'm impressed. The thing is that we have to celebrate every victory, every step, but we have always, always, always to check, to check. Because if you base your transformation or your, um, let's say, conclusion on illusions, you are going straight to the wall, okay? People can be in a product team, they can be co-located, they can have a super use <coughs> of all the good systems, but if at the end you don't have this sanity check permanently, checking that the guys speak to each other, they don't have too many uh, impediments, all these points are important. I'm fighting every day with illusions. IT guys cannot say they are agile today. It's wrong. Business is not agile. We are on the way. But we have to prove this every day. 
because if not, we will never reach the target. We will crash before. Let's conclude with the lessons learned. Yes, just a quick conclusion on how to, um, a practical conclusion on how to uh, escape from these illusions. The first thing, uh, find your own way. This is the zero thing. Um, when you will start your learning path, you will have a lot of frameworks around you. You will have a lot of uh, cool uh, practices, but make sure that these practices are really uh, about you. They're about your company. To do that, you have to try, but don't be too much tightened to the frameworks. The second lesson learned, the or the first one as well here, because that one was zero, trust the teams to do their mistakes. This is a basic uh, mistake which the organizations do. When they start a pilot, they try to clean everything up around this pilot because they want to have the best pilot ever. So every time the team does the mistake, everyone runs there and corrects this mistake. This is, the, this is really a mistake to correct them, these mistakes, because uh, uh, first the team can cover it by themselves, uh, second, uh, the more you correct, the less myst systemic mistakes you will see. So you will just not have any kind of experience. Um, the next one, um, as soon as you start Agile and the teams will work and they really will have these uh, retrospectives and uh, they will make the problems of the organization visible, they will really raise up a lot of things. But you have to keep in mind that you are doing the agile transformation. You are not cleaning up everything in your company. So concentrate on those things that are really related and important for your transformation. Don't try to resolve everything. Because you will have the HR problems, you will have the procurement problems, you will, everything will be on fire. But concentrate on the things which are really about you and about your products, about your projects, about your teams. Manage the volumes. As soon as you put the seat of Agile, you do one Agile training, everyone in the organization starts to speak, we also want to go Agile, we also want to try Agile. But you have, uh, in our Agile transformation team, we have uh, like around 10 people, and uh, this is just the capacity of 10 people to manage the changes. We, can, we cannot exceed it. Everyone will have a lot of appetite, but don't, don't try to run in every direction. Well, this is purely an example of backlog management and yes. resource management. Exactly. Well, w as we said, we are um, learning by doing, and this is really something now we can share with our product owners and scrum masters saying, okay, guys, we understand now. Uh, we have the same yeah. problems. You will have really a lot of ideas, but try to prioritize your ideas. The next one is that agility is just a starting point. So first manage the volumes, but second manage the volumes which will come after your agile transformation. Because as soon as you have the Agile, you will have the teams running faster, they will be accelerated, but business will need to prioritize them. They will need to prioritize based on the customer experience. And this is where you will start the customer journey, and this is another kind of transformation, and of course it will take time. From the IT side, they will also need to do some changes because they will need to change the technologies that they are using, and this also takes time. So overall, hear the message, it takes time. And Every Agile transformation will initiate even more transformation and uh, changes in your company. Make sure transformation is really happening. This is what Sebastian told. Here, the practical things is first speak to your Scrum Masters, put your Scrum Masters together so they speak and you hear what they are speaking about. And second, just the best Agile tool, as uh, one of the speakers said yesterday, is the uh, conversation. Go and speak to the team but be ready to uh, ask the right questions. <laughs> ask the team how they celebrate their uh, victories. This is uh, really the question which is very, very meaningful. The next one, be agile in your agile transformation. Um, you will have a lot of ideas and you will have the vision in the beginning, but it will change and it will need to be changed because you will be become more mature, the, uh, Everything around you, the environment will change. So don't stick to the preliminary plan. This is normal. And the last, be continuous. As I told, things are changing, but make sure that what you are doing will, will not disappear from the organization. Don't base your organization on the people, your transformation on the people. 
based on the processes which are enabled by the people. We had a good example, actually, uh, you left us two months ago, yes? Um, and the transformation is still ongoing. And the second point, which you shouldn't forget when you're working in a big organization, is that uh, you will be checked and audited. So whatever nice, cool transformations you have, the audit will come and they do not care what kind of agility you do. So make sure to do it continuous and at least to have some documentation above. So I guess it's all about the practical lessons learned. Yes, and that's probably all in general. Um, Guys, I really thank you very much for attending. Um, I just want you to consider one important point is that as we said, we are not agile experts, we are not agile gurus, we are just sharing experience. So the pleasure of being here is real because um, we really believe in this agile transformation globally. Many IT companies are doing agile like a way of working every day. So it becomes a routine, it should not. Agile is something which should be continuously improved I really believe in what I'm saying right now. This is a new way of working because it's dynamic and we have to keep it dynamic, whatever the maturity. We have to share because as we said, there is not one plan, one program, one way of doing. Uh, I'm always happy to be challenged and to, to meet other guys working on this. Nastya said, I left uh, Ukraine two months ago after five years. I'm sad, okay, just keep it in mind. I'm sad to leave Ukraine. Uh, I'm going to the other side of the border with another bank still from the group in Poland with the same challenge that we had two years ago. They want to go, but it does not work. And today the way is just to explain what we explained today and to enrich it and to learn by, by experience again. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy this beautiful event. Thank you, Genia. Thank you.